All right, I think we can go ahead and get started. So thank you everybody for joining us today for our virtual job fair featuring our bus mechanic position. My name is Lindsay Estupignan and I work with the recruitment team in the human resources office at the Chicago Transit Authority. With me today, I have a couple of my colleagues from our bus maintenance department who are gonna help us out at the end with our question and answer session. But during today's presentation, we're gonna give a general overview of working at the CTA. We'll talk specifically about the bus mechanic position We'll also talk about the application process. And then finally, at the end, we will have time for your questions. So everybody is going to be muted for this presentation just to prevent any audio interference. But if you do have questions, please submit them to us using the chat function. And if, if you can submit them to the, the person labeled um, Q&A CTA, that would really help us out. So keep those questions coming throughout the presentation. We would love to have a really robust discussion at the end, whether it's something for human resources about the application or whether it's more about the specifics, the day-to-day -day of the bus mechanic job, anything is, is fair game at this point. So we would love to get those questions answered for you. But with that, we'll go ahead and jump into our presentation. So at the Chicago Transit Authority, our mission is to deliver quality, affordable transit services that link people, jobs, and communities. Now, this mission statement means something a little bit different to everybody who works, who works at CTA. But for me, it really underscores the importance of CTA. It really emphasizes that we are the lifeblood, lifeblood of Chicago, and our city would work and it would go to school and it would do its business in a very different way if we didn't provide quality, safe public transportation. So I like to think of CTA as the lifeblood of our city, um, really giving life to our city in a lot of different ways. So at CTA, we have approximately 11,000 employees. Some of our employee, employees are in a union, some are not. So for example, our bus mechanic job is represented by a union. Um, my job in human resources is not, so I'm a non-union employee. So it's a really interesting place to work when we have a mix of both sides of that. We serve, sorry, we serve Chicago and 35 area suburbs. Um, and we do that through 130 bus routes and eight rail lines. We have locations across the city, including our headquarters located at 567 West Lake Street. That's where a lot of our administrative functions come out of. We also have seven bus garages. We have nine rail terminals and two shops. So again, these are locations all over the city. Um, employees are assigned to one of these locations based on the job that they apply for and then the manpower needs at each of our locations. So at CTA, when you become one of our employees, you're really becoming part of the CTA family. And that's a phrase that is used quite a bit at our organization. And I can attest to the fact that it really is a family-like atmosphere. You get very close with your coworkers and people are really here to support you, support you in your job, in your development. So when you come in as an employee, as a bus mechanic, you're going to get a lot of support and training on the front end. Um, our bus mechanics start with five months of paid training. And we do that because we wanna make sure that they are equipped to maintain and repair our buses to the standards that we have, to the very high standards that we have. So that when they are off doing their job, we know that we can rely on them to provide great service and to do things according to our, our clear standards. We are also providing tools and technology that help you achieve the goals of your job. And you'll see a few of those examples in a little video we have to show you later on in the presentation. We also support on the job training and career growth and professional development opportunities. So there are a lot of opportunities for our employees who are interested in working, maybe working their way up within a department, there are absolutely opportunities for them to advance. And everybody at CTA is somebody or knows somebody who has spent 10, 20, 30 years here, whether it's in the same job or a different job, kind of, um, or sorry, there are great stories um, that really attest to that, to attest to people moving throughout the ranks here at CTA. We are also making sure that we're keeping you updated on the latest technology or any advances or changes in your industry to, again, just make sure that you are able to perform your job to the best of your ability. 
So now we'll talk a little bit about the bus mechanic position specifically. Our bus mechanics are all full-time employees and their starting salary at CTA is $29.82 an hour. This is a really good starting salary for bus mechanics. I've been doing some research recently and I've learned that the average bus mechanic salary in Chicago and in fact the nation hovers around 40 to $42,000. When you do the math on this, this starting salary is about $62,000 a year. So it is much higher than that average. Um, and so it's a really, really great salary to start with anywhere. Um, and at the CTA, we offer that. Since this is a full-time job, we also offer full-time benefits. So medical, dental, and retirement plans. And then part of at the CTA, we also provide you with your toolbox, which is another huge benefit of working as a bus mechanic at the CTA. You will be assigned to both your location and your shift when you enter the organization as one of our employees. And early on, you're not going to have a lot of say over your schedule or the location you're based out of. But like with many jobs, the longer you're here, the more time you put in, the more seniority that you, that you gain, you get more control over time through what we have, what we call our system picks or our schedule picks. So you will get over time more ability to control both your location and your shift. So our bus mechanics work on a fleet of more than 1800 buses. When they come in, we do need them to have some basic skills. We need to know that you've got that baseline knowledge of being able to um, repair one of our vehicles. But again, we provide five months of paid training. So we are going to teach you the specifics of your role. We're gonna make you very familiar with our vehicles. We're gonna make sure you know how to diagnose and repair the various parts of these machines. Some of the characteristics of our bus mechanics that we really look for in your application and throughout the hiring process are a commitment to safety. Safety is the highest priority of the CTA, keeping our employees safe and our customers safe. So safety is something that you will have drilled into you every single day that you're on the job um, multiple times a day because it is so, so important to keeping our employees and our public safe. We also would love to see mechanics who are excellent problem solvers, again, able to diagnose what is malfunctioning and knowing how to go about repairing that is a really important skill set. Being on time and punctual is also an important part of this job. Um, luckily, that's something that can be taught or learned over time because I know sometimes I know I'm always a few minutes late, but they really drill it into you, the importance of being on time for all of your shifts. And you'll learn much more about that um, if you do come on board with us as a mechanic. And then finally, we really value flexibility. Um, so again, when you come in, being flexible with that shift or your location, and then over time, of course, being flexible with the people you work with or the, the situations that you're working within, Flexibility is always a desirable skill of this job and many, many others. In fact, all others, I would say, at the CTA. Now, one of the requirements for our bus mechanics is a commercial driver's license. So you don't need the CDL in order to apply to this job. So let's say that after this presentation, you've liked what you've heard, you wanna start your journey with us, you can actually go and fill out your application today and you don't need to have your CDL in hand. Um, we can actually get you through all the steps of the hiring process. And if we find that you're a good fit for this job and we offer you a letter of uh, an offer letter um, and you can accept that job before you would actually start the job, though, before day one, you would need to obtain at least the commercial learner's permit. Um, so that will allow us to get you into training and get you behind the wheel of a bus and eventually prepare you to take uh, or to obtain that CDL. So it can get a little tricky. I'm happy to clarify again at the end, but you don't need your CDL to apply or, your, or you don't need your CLP or CDL to apply, but you will eventually need to have it. Um, you are doing things like moving a bus. So you need to have that license in order to operate that bus in, in your functionality as a bus mechanic. But again, if you have any questions about that, please feel free to submit those in the chat and we can talk about those at the end. So as I've mentioned uh, once or twice already, training is a huge part of this job and offering um, 
five months of paid training is what everybody will come in with when they come in as a bus mechanic. So to talk a little bit about our training center, we're gonna see a little video, uh, which is featuring one of our team members at the training center. Hello, my name is Oscar Sanchez. I am an instructor for the Chicago Transit Authority's Bus Maintenance Training Center. I'm here today to provide an overview of the many facets of training conducted here at the training center. I would also like to showcase the types of training and support we provide to the CTA and its workforce. First, let's begin with the fact that the CTA is one of the largest transit properties in the nation. We provide transit service to our customers 24 hours a day and seven days a week. Along with being one of the nation's largest providers of public transportation, it requires that we must always be at the top of our game and ready to meet as well as keep pace with the ever-changing high-tech world. Although the quality and comfort is important, our number one priority is the safety of our employees and passengers. The Chicago Transit Authority uses diverse state-of-the-art equipment. Our bus maintenance technicians and mechanics must be trained and show proficiency on the latest in transit technology. Each bus technician and mechanic is required to complete training at the training center and pass a series of written and practical exams to prepare them for their roles. The training curriculum and course components taught are necessary to maintain, repair, as well as update our transit fleet and its systems on CTA buses. PLC systems include various types of logic and logic controls, which are at the forefront of our bus electrical systems. Each technician is intensely trained in these systems prior to earning his or her qualification and certification. Now let me caution you, each student must perform at every level, inspections, and properly diagnose using calibrated test equipment. The challenge doesn't stop with electrical systems. We also incorporate the latest in pneumatic technology, which spans several complete air system types and configurations. And these systems include ABS, ATC, suspension, and auxiliary controls. Pneumatic training also deals with components that function with pressurized or compressed air. Now, while safety is essential to equipment repair, diagnosis and or inspections are extremely vital. We also provide in-depth hybrid training. Much of CTA's fleet has been updated with fuel efficient hybrid buses. We have a live hybrid mock-up that was built at our very own training facility. Because it has all functioning attributes of the actual bus, this training mock-up has proven to be an amazing training aid. The Chicago Transit Authority's latest addition to our fleet is the introduction of the all-electric bus. This new bus has a zero emission drivetrain, which is extremely important to the air quality and ultimately helps to maintain our environment. We provide the training for this updated technology from the ADA certified ramp at the front of the bus to engine powertrain at the rear of the bus. It's all covered here at the Bus Maintenance Training Center. If this is a path or career that interests you, perhaps we will see you here one day. My name is Oscar Sanchez and thank you for watching. All right, so I hope that was really beneficial for you all to learn a little bit more about what our training center consists of. Again, if you have any questions about that, any questions that are specific to um, the training or the work that you would be doing, make sure that you um, plug those into our chat box and we can get those answered at the end. So now that you know a little bit about the job and the training, let's talk a bit about the hiring process and what that would look like for our bus mechanics. 
Now, for our bus mechanics, um, there are several steps to the application process, and we'll go through each of those in just a moment. Um, once you submit your application, if you are selected to move forward in the process, then it usually takes about four to six weeks in order for us to get you through that entire hiring process and get you started in the job. So that's kind of the average. It can vary depending on um, how quickly you respond to some of the things we're asking of you, how quickly we can get your testing scheduled. Um, but that is the average that it typically takes. So four to six weeks um, to get you through the hiring process is what we are seeing right now. So the first step to joining us at the CTA is to fill out an online application. So you can visit our website, transitchicago.com careers, you can visit actually today, the bus mechanic job is posted. So if you're interested in applying, again, you can get that started right away. The first step is filling out a profile. So this will just be some basic information about yourself. You only fill out a profile once. So let's say you wanna apply for the bus me mechanic position today. Um, you fill out your profile and you submit your application, but let's say you, you get a job somewhere else, you go somewhere else. Um, but next year you wanna try to be a bus mechanic again. That other job didn't work out. You're interested in CTA again. Um, you can go through, you'll use the same profile, but you'll just have to submit a new application for the new job. So one profile, one time, and that's all you have to do. Um, after, you sub or after you fill out that profile, you will have to submit it to the online application for bus mechanics. So that's kind of part two of that application process. We highly recommend that when you submit an application to our bus mechanic position, that you include a resume. It doesn't have to be you know, a beautiful document and you don't have to hire a graphic designer to, um, to help you, you know, make it look really beautiful. Um, but we do just wanna know the content. We wanna know um, your responsibilities that you've had in past jobs. We wanna know the certifications, the education that you've had. So more information than your application alone can tell us. So help us understand your experience by submitting a resume. It's really gonna help you stand out um, and it'll really give us, it'll make our recruiter's job a little bit easier when we can see these are the qualifications we're looking for. And hey, this person has those qualifications. They told us on the resume that they have those qualifications. So help, it, help, help make our job a little easier um, by submitting that resume. When you are submitting your application and your resume, there are a couple questions that we, we recommend you ask yourself as you're planning to apply for this job and as you are applying for the job. So the first is, do I qualify for the job? Do I have the years of experience or the certifications that are required? Um, so if you don't have those, probably not a great idea to apply, but if you do, that should be a clear signal to move ahead. Is your resume current? So again, we really recommend submitting a resume. Um, does it show your full work history? Does it show what you've been doing in the last, last several years? If you haven't updated your resume for two years or five years, um, make sure you update it so we can see what you've been doing in the past. And that will really just help us inform or help inform us about your work history and help us to determine whether you um, are a good candidate to move forward in our process. Does my resume speak to the job I'm applying for? So again, um, telling us in your resume how you meet the requirements of the bus mechanic. And then finally, do I have a valid driver's license? So that is um, a, a condition that we do require for our bus mechanics. So making sure that you have it, it's valid, it's, it's current. Um, that's gonna be an important part of the process too. So now let's talk about testing. All of our bus mechanics will take, do some testing. So they will have both a written exam, uh, which is an online exam that you'll take. And then you'll also be scheduled for a practical. So during that, we, do, we have you do things like identify tools or um, walk us through assembling or disassembling a different part. Uh, we just really need to know again that you have those baseline skills to be able to be hired on as a bus mechanic and then come for your additional training. All of our candidates must pass the testing before they can move forward in the selection process. And if you pass, your score is good for three years. If you fail that test, then you do have to wait one year before you could reapply and retest. So it's not the end of your CTA journey if you fail, you do just have to wait one year before you could try for that job and take that test again. So let's say you, you make it through the testing with flying colors, everything was great. 
So the next step is doing interviews. So the first interview that we will do with you is just a, a phone interview with an HR recruiter. Um, this is gonna be about 30 minutes. And in that interview, we'll really just focus on your work history, asking you some kind of basic general questions and starting to verify some of your information. Your second interview is going to be with, again, HR, and also one of our department managers, so one of the managers in bus maintenance. Um, that interview will be a little bit longer, and again, we'll just dive deeper into your work history and into your education and skills and your experience. Now, as we're talking about interviews, we do have a list of do's and don'ts that we like to share with all of our applicants. Um, we'll focus more on the do's in the interest of time today. But one of the great things for you to think about or think about as you're preparing your, your, for your interviews, um, our video interviews have replaced our in-person interview. So we used to have you come into our building and interview. Now we're doing them all through Zoom, just like we're on Zoom right now, again, because of um, COVID-19 restrictions and, and respecting social distancing. Um, so as you're preparing for your Zoom interview, these are some really, these are things we really recommend you do before that. So first of all, again, review the job description before you interview and think about how you meet the requirements. One thing that I always like to do when I'm preparing for an interview is look at that list of responsibilities and rephrase it as a question and then practice how I would respond to that as a question. Uh, we recommend you log in early to test your connection to the technology, testing your video, testing your audio. It's really frazzling when you start um, a call or start an interview, you haven't tested that and something's not working. Um, it's hard to kind of recover from that. Not impossible, but it's difficult when you start off on that foot. So logging in a few minutes early to make sure everything is working well is going to um, set you up for success. Similarly to that, planning to interview in a quiet place with minimal distractions. So if you are planning to interview at a place where there's a lot of activity happening behind you, uh, where there's a lot of sound, uh, people are moving around, maybe you're at a coffee shop, people are moving around, you've got a mask on, um, it's not gonna be a great experience. It's gonna be kind of hard to hear. It could be distracting for both you and the other people on the interview. So finding a quiet place is one of our recommendations as well. And then presenting yourself um, in uh, interview appropriate clothing and presenting yourself in a polite and professional way are also tips that we have. And then finally, as we're interviewing you and asking questions, we really recommend that you are providing answers to us about your experience and what you things you have done in the past. Um, we, we don't really want you to talk about what you would do, maybe a theoretical question. We wanna know what you have done because that will help inform us. That will help us know if you, how you will react in a similar situation that comes up in the bus mechanic job. So again, these are just some tips um, that we recommend as you think about preparing for an interview. These are good things for you to practice and plan for. So once you get through the interview process, let's say you met all the requirements, our, our recruiter and our, our manager loved you, that you were a great fit for this job and are excited to have you on board. Um, there are a few more steps that you have to take before you could actually become um, an employee of the CTA. So you, we can get you your offer letter, extend the job to you, but then these are some of the steps that you have to still complete before you can start your job. So that includes a background check. It includes a drug test physical and medical testing, and employment and education verification. And so we just need to make sure that you are fit for a job, um, that the information that you've given us about, again, your education and your work history, anything um, in your background that you've told us, we just need to verify that that information is true and accurate. Um, and the best thing that I can tell you about this, um, this part of our process is to be upfront on your application. Answer our questions fully, give us the full information that we're asking for, because when these things then show up on pre-employment, um, it's not a surprise to us. So once you pass all of your background, you've done your testing and everything, and, and everything turns out um, with positive results, good results, um, then you become part of the CTA family. So welcome aboard. Um, again, some of the CTA benefits that all of our full-time employees are eligible for are health and wellness benefits, free transit on CTA and PACE buses, 
and 401k and 457 retirement plans. So some of the, those are some of the more tangible benefits of this job. So as we kind of wrap up the information part of this session, just want to encourage you all, if you don't, do not currently follow us on LinkedIn, um, to, to please do that. Um, follow us to find out what jobs are becoming available, um, are any events that we're putting on, and find out more about our CTA culture. We like to feature our people on our LinkedIn page and, and share more about what our workplace culture too. So we would love to, for you all to follow us and just track along with us there. Of course, we also have Facebook and Twitter accounts so you can follow us there too. But LinkedIn is where we really um, focus on the job related content. So follow us on LinkedIn, please. So that wraps up the information part of our presentation today. I'm going to kick it over to my colleague, Leticia, who is going, she's been taking those questions that you have been submitting. Um, and so she is going to pose those to our recruitment team and also to our, um, our team from the bus maintenance department, Bob and Chris. So Leticia, go ahead and take it away. Thank you, Lindsay. Um, I am the recruitment team today, so I'll be you know, talking about some of the questions that have been asked um, frequently. We have had a lot of questions sent privately and some to the public forum, but among um, one of the first questions was what are the requirements? And I think that Lindsay did a good job of kind of talking with, about what the requirements are, what we're looking for in a candidate. We are looking for someone who has either verifiable work experience or some sort of certificate in that particular space. Um, but the good thing is that if you are not sure if if your qualifications are meeting the standards of the job, these, this particular position does require different tests. So our candidates are gonna first and foremost be asked to come in and, and take a written test to really gauge your foundational knowledge about this area. Um, and then if you pass that test, then we're gonna put you in front of some equipment and bring you on site to do a practical test. So if you are making it all the way to first day at CTA, um, you can feel rest assured that, that we've already established that you have the foundations that you need. And as the, the video uh, pointed out, we will train you on the rest. Um, so we are looking for some verifiable work experience um, in that particular area. Um, or certificates from any of the local places that offer auto diesel or mechanic certificates. Some of the common places that we always see certificates from are places like Lincoln Tech or UTI. Some of the city colleges have that as well. Um, so if you put that on your resume and we know that you have had some experience in this, then you'll be invited to come and take the written test. Um, if your application or your resume does not list anything like that, if, if it shows us some great experience in customer service or something else, but we have no way of identifying that you've had experience in mechanics of any kind, then you're not likely going to be asked to come in and take the test and maybe you do have that experience. So like Lindsay mentioned, you'll want to make sure that your resume um, really articulates and reflects the experience that you've had. Um, some folks have a lot of experience in mechanics, but they haven't necessarily had a job in that space. Um, and, and that's okay, but you want to make sure that you put on your resume uh, that you've had that experience when and how and for how long, so that we can see that this is someone who has the foundations to, to at least come and take the assessments. Um, another question that was asked several times was uh, I've taken one of these tests before. How, when can I take the practical again or, or what happens next? So let me talk a little bit more about testing. I know that Lindsay covered it in part in the presentation. Um, our tests are good for a period of time. And likewise, if you don't pass the test, you have to wait a period of time before you can do it again. So if you have passed the written test, those are good for three years. So if you took the test last year and you took the written test and you passed it, um, but you didn't follow through for whatever reason, if it wasn't the right time, that written test result is still good for a total of three years. So if you apply to us again, you don't have to take that written test again. We'll pick it up right there and take it from there. So we'll start you with the practical um, in that particular situation. If you pass the written test, but you failed that practical test, you're able to take that practical test again at least a year later. So you have to wait a full calendar year before you're able to come back and take the test again. But again, that written test will be good for a solid three years. Um, so our standard across the board is if you fail one of our processes, you must wait a calendar year before you're able to come back and, and do it again. Okay. Um, but the plus side is again, that written test is good for at least three years. Um, some of the other questions that we got, 
is can I get my CDL without your learner's permit? Well, not at CTA. So if you're trying to get your CDL through a different organization or on your own, I encourage you to visit the Secretary of State website to see what their requirements are for you to do that. In order to get your CDL through CTA, through our training programs, you must have the CLP, the Commercial Learner's Permit, with the air brakes and passenger endorsements in order to start the job. As Lindsay mentioned, you don't need to have those credentials in your hand when you apply or even for us to offer you the job. You can make it successfully through the interview and we'll shake your hand and offer you the position, but we will not confirm a start date or begin your pre-employment or your background process until you have the CLP with the appropriate permits, uh, endorsements. So we encourage you to, if, if this is something that you are very interested in, whether it's this position or our operator position and you don't yet have your commercial learner's permit, um, to start that process now. Um, one of the other questions, and I'll get to that next because it, it um, has to do with the same topic, is whether or not CTA has any um, materials to help with any of the tests. For the CLP process, we direct you to the Secretary of State. You can download their entire booklet that you can study from for the CLP. There's also several apps that exist that will test you on the knowledge that you need to pass that CLP exam to get that learner's permit. Um, if you haven't started that, I encourage you to do it today um, so that by the time you come in for your interview and we offer you the job, you have already either secured the CLP or you are headed there the very next day. Um, what often happens is we'll offer someone a position that doesn't have it, and then you know two or three months go by before they get that learner's permit. The last thing you want to happen is uh, for us to fill all of our vacancies before you're able to really get an opportunity to get that job. So um, if this is something you're seriously considering, you can go onto the Secretary of State website today, download the booklet, start studying for that uh, CLP, and take it as soon as you feel ready. Um, if you do try and take it before you feel ready and you don't pass it, you do have to wait 30 days before you can take it again. So although we urge you to, to do this you know, as soon as possible, we also urge you to prepare for it because it is a lot of information. So you wanna make sure that you're, you're attempting that first try um, when you're fully prepared. Um, do your, uh, one of the other questions that we have was, um, is there any uh, materials to help for our tests? Um, no, so we don't provide any materials for, for candidates to, to take the CTA related tests. We just tell you that it's general knowledge in, in the particular field. For candidates that have had experience in this particular space and industry, um, the tests will be basic knowledge for them. But we don't have testing materials or study guides for any of the CTA related assessments. Um, other questions that were asked a couple of times was in which format do we want to receive your experience, your resume? Um, and for this, I, I like this question because a lot of our candidates choose not to submit a resume. And it's not a requirement. You don't have to submit a resume. A lot of people just fill out the fields in the application where we ask you to list where you worked and, and what you did and how long you were there. But I strongly encourage you to. Uh, prepare a resume and submit a resume. Um, and if we're strongly encouraging you to do it, you should take that as a requirement. So we will look at the profile that you, that you typed in, but providing that resume will always put you a step ahead because we're able to see in one glance everything that you've done. And it allows you to give a little bit of detail of what you know, what you've learned, um, or how you've applied that knowledge into your previous jobs in a way that listing your jobs in the application just won't. So it is a small um, but incredibly helpful step in the application process for CTA and for any other job. So if you take anything away from this presentation is don't do the default of not submitting one because it's not required. Do yourself the service of taking some time in advance and preparing a resume. This doesn't have to be you know, something incredibly fancy or anything like that. We just wanna see A, who took the effort to do it for us. Um, that is one big plus, but then also see how you're able to articulate the experience that you've had, especially as it relates to this job. Um, so, you know, think of the, the work that you've done. Does any of it have to do with 
bus maintenance or maintenance or, or auto maintenance in any kind, then you want to make sure that you highlight that in your resume. That shouldn't be at the very bottom where it's the last thing that we see. Um, so just a few tips on, on how to make sure that your application is as strong as possible when we're reviewing it uh, amidst 2,000 other applications that came in that same week, which for bus mechanics and, and our um, operators and any of these uh, positions at CTA are very high volume, um, very popular positions. Uh, another question, which is a really good question, is about the behavioral questions. Um, is that how we uh, do our, our, our interviews um, in the STAR format? And it is. Um, CTA does use the behavioral method for interviews. So if you've never interviewed at CTA, this might be your first time with this particular type of interviews. Um, here's a couple of tips for you. Like Lindsay mentioned in her presentation, we want to see what you have done in a similar situation. It's very easy for us to say, yeah, if something like that happened, this is what I would do. Um, we can all think of what we would do or what we want to do in a particular situation. But if that situation arose, would we actually be fast enough to do that thing? We want to see what you have done in that situation. So for our questions, um, regardless of what they are, we're always going to ask you to think of a time where something similar happened and to tell us exactly what you did. Um, and then we're going to be looking for you to, to give us the, the situation that happened, what you did and the decisions that you made, and then what the results of, of those actions were, good or bad. Um, and so those will be the formats of our questions and the questions will be geared around um, topics that are important for this job. So, uh, so it's a great question to ask um, because CTA does use that method of, of interviewing. Um, let me just take a look and make sure that no additional questions came in. Um, oh, a couple of more have come in and these again are great questions, good group. Um, do you have to live in, the C in Chicago to work for the CTA? Yes and no. So certain jobs have that requirement. Our non-union jobs have the requirement of having to live within the CTA service area. But if you are in a union position, which our bus mechanics are, that is not a requirement that has to be met. So they're exempt from that particular ordinance. Um, so for this position, the answer is no. Um, but for other positions, the answer may be yes. So that would be a good question to ask uh, if you're interested in other jobs as well. Um, if you've already submitted an application, which our, our friend Joe has asked, um, the best way to check the status of your application is to look on your status page. When you submit an application, you create a profile page and every job that you apply to at CTA is listed on that page. And you'll be able to see a status of either active or canceled. If the application is canceled, it means that you are no longer being considered and that could be for a variety of reasons. Either we've already filled the position with somebody else, uh, we only had maybe two vacancies and 2,000 applications, so that could be the case. Um, or it could be that you didn't meet one of the requirements um, of the job or that you did meet them, but we had somebody else who had a stronger application, which can definitely also be the case. But you'll be able to check your status on your profile page, the same login and ID that you use to submit your application. Um, how, when do we look to fill our vacancies or how many vacancies are available? That question is gonna have a different answer depending on the job and depending on the time of year. For bus mechanics, I'd say we have roughly between 15 and 20 vacancies. Um, and you know, by next month, we might have 25. And the next month after that, we might have filled them all and we only have three. So it really depends on the manpower needs of the organization and how many strong and qualified applicants we get at a time. So if after this presentation, 30 of you apply, pass the written test, pass the practical test, and pass all of our pre-employment, we'll fill all of our spots and we'll have zero left. And we want to do that as soon as possible. Um, but if we get to the interviews and nobody has their CLP, then we still have 20 vacancies that we need to continue to work to fill. So it's really going to depend on the strength of our applicant pool um, at, at any given time. Um, and then the physical requirements for the job. Um, we, this particular position has both a practical, as we've already discussed, but also has a physical 
um, two actually that have to be taken as part of pre-employment. So if you are offered the position, we'll send you to one of our partner uh, organizations, Concentra Clinic, to take a, a DOT physical, a Department of Transportation physical that you have to pass in order to, re to receive a DOT card. Um, and you need to be able to receive that to move forward with the process. Um, you'll also take a human physical examination, an HPE at Concentra um, soon after. Uh, which will also gauge whether or not you're able to do the physical abilities of the job, twisting, turning, lifting, things like that. So um, there are some, uh, some physical aspects to the job that we want to make sure that you're able to, to perform um, before you start the job. And we'll do those tests once you've accepted the position um, after interviews and everything has taken place. So I'll see if our partners in bus mechanics have anything that they want to add as far as tips of, or um, advice for our candidates and our participants today. Bob or Chris, anything to add? I'd just like to say thank you all for uh, showing interest in participating. Um, if, there, if there's any nerves, which we usually see a little nerves around the practical testing, let's just know that to put your, your mechanic skills that you already know We'll be, we'll be putting those to the test. We're, we're not putting you to the test. We're, we're putting your knowledge uh, of the mechanical abilities that you, you probably already possess. So, so um, the best advice is leave the nerves at home when you come for the testing. Anything left, Lindsay? I think that's all we've got for today. So thank you everybody so much for joining us today. We hope to see a lot of applications start coming in. Um, you can visit our website, transitchicago.com slash careers to see that posting that's um, up on their website today. You can start that up application today. Um, thank you to our participants from our bus maintenance team. Thanks for being on the call with us. Um, and we hope that many of you get to meet them very soon. So have a great day, everybody, and enjoy the rest of your uh, the rest of your day.